Okay, you should be live. All right. Uh, hey, everybody. Garfum, I'll be showing you the Diablo 3 Demon Hunter New Game Run. And time will start on my first action in game, so I'll count that down. All right. Three, two, one, go. Okay, so first of all, for uh, Diablo 3, you'll notice I'm walking straight past these zombies. Uh, basically, all of my experience during this run will be obtained through quests and will be ignoring combat as much as possible, only killing things to progress the quest or to uh, get things to stop body blocking me. Got some zombies, and now we're gonna head to Leah in the inn. And I'm gonna grab, click on that book thing there, and we're gonna pick that up on our way out to get enough XP to hit level two. That will unlock Impale for us. Villagers were too afraid to settle near the ruins of the cursed town Tristram. And now, now we get to listen to Decker Kane. Adventurers arrive for, for just a moment. Cathedral. So our, our first objective here is to kill this wretched mother, which we're just going to walk past. Uh, because, yeah, apparently we'll kill her by ignoring her. She's very sad that we ignored her and died. So the uh, beginning of the run for about 9-10 uh, minutes is walking until we can unlock our vault skill at level 9. And then we will also unlock a passive at level 10 called Tactical Advantage, which gives us movement speed after vaulting and movement speed after other various skills such as Evasive Fire, which we will take later on. So, uh, one of our bonus objectives right now is to kill these Wretched Mothers as well. That'll give us extra XP. Some people prefer to take it. I prefer to not stop for anything if I don't need to. And a trick I'm going to try and do now with Leah. Oh, well, I instantly messed it up. Basically, what I wanted to do was not skip that conversation. And then if I move right after waypointing back, she'll actually spawn at the gate, which will save uh, the distance she has to walk to it. And she's stuck again. We're not quite sure why she gets stuck at that point sometimes. So, we haven't found any, or we found one pair of gloves yet, we haven't found any duplicate items, but nothing from that chest. Part of the uh, new game run, we have um, specific rules in place for Diablo 3 since it's always online for PC. You're not allowed to use Paragon, your stash tab, artisans, or vendors. And that means I will be dropping extra items that I find directly onto the ground instead of selling them or salvaging them. Um, from a speedrunning perspective, that would be the fastest way to get them out of your inventory if you didn't need to get the currency or uh, items from it. So now we're in Cathedral Level 1, uh, basically the first random map of the game. Uh, there's not much... Uh, to go off of for this level, except for one variation that is very rare. It will tell you right from where you drop in where to go. So right there we picked up a uh, Shrine of Enlightenment that gives us bonus 25% bonus XP. It's not super useful, but it will help us get to level 9 faster, which is very important. And uh, this map has a 2x2 two two square, which we've already gone through, so now we should be heading straight to Decker Kane to save him. Yep. 
So after we save Deckard Kane, we don't have our teleport ability yet, but we will be able to teleport out just using the map. And if we didn't use the map to get out, normally the way they intend you to leave is he will open up this bookcase over here and you take the waypoint back. However, we can just open the map and waypoint via that. My hatred is too low. And that kills a little bit slow because we didn't find any items or a weapon because these pants and boots don't give us anything. Next is probably the biggest trick in the run. It's not very flashy, but it is very important, especially for uh, Monk and Demon Hunter. So we're going to do this next quest, and before I hand it in, I'm going to leave the game and turn the difficulty up to Torment 6, which is the highest difficulty we can turn it up to before hitting level 70. And then we'll hand in the quest, and that'll put us up to level 7. Normally, if I were to hand in this quest without changing the difficulty, it would uh, give about a half of level of experience, but instead doing this trick will give us a huge boost in levels, getting us to level 9 and level 10 a lot faster. And I'm standing in this specific spot on purpose because if I stand um, any closer in this room or any further back, uh, it will not give me a portal back down into this dungeon and I would have to run through town to get there again. Change it up to Torment 6. Zoom. Also, after I killed her, it gave me the item reward for that quest, but the XP hand-in doesn't happen until I talk to him. I don't know why those are separate. So now we're level 7, and we need to turn it back down to normal. So we don't die. Hopefully the game didn't just crash. Well, that's weird. Normally, if it uh, forcibly brings me out of the game, it gives me an error. Um, I wonder if it'll have me hand in the quest again. I've never had that happen. <sighs> okay, so no. It just made me walk further. That's nice. Okay, so for this next part, I have the sound turned up a little bit. Um, I'm heading towards the Defiled Crypts, and I'll be taking some skills on my way there as well. Um, so I can indeed move with this skill screen open. I can only take skills if I'm considered not in combat, and these things chasing me, I'm assuming because they haven't hit me, uh, I'm not considered in combat. As soon as something like sneezes on me though, I will not be able to change skills for like a year. And I'm also going to get a movement speed bonus by breaking objects here. So the minimum to get this bonus is breaking seven objects. And this should be the right crypt. So right now, uh, I was listening for the background wind, or the ambient noise. And there's separ several different volume sliders uh, in the options. And I basically have the uh, ambient slider pulled all the way up just for this part of the run. And uh, the way the sound differs from this one and the incorrect crypts is this one's uh, a little bit louder and it's uh, slightly higher pitched. Although, when you head in, uh, it can start the like the wind noise track that they have at different parts in the track. So certain parts of the track are actually very hard to tell the difference between the two. So now we'll set the volume back to what I normally have it at. And these guys spawned in an unfortunate spot. Normally I want them to spawn at the other side so they don't interrupt me from leaving. Otherwise I just have to kill them all, including this ghost. 
So like I said, I don't want to do extra killing, but I needed to get those skeletons out of the way because they'll stop me from teleporting out. And those are the exact same bow I already have. So there we had just unlocked our teleport ability that's uh, the intended first point that they let you teleport out. And I'm going to get more move speed here. And timed it a little too early for maximum move speed bonus uh, into this room. And the big difference between teleporting through the uh, map and through the... Uh, through the teleport skill is the teleport skill will leave a portal for you in town to go back to and the waypoints uh, using the map will not. This is mostly useful in co-op runs. There are some uses for it though in, um, in this run. Specifically, I don't want to use the map to teleport back to town if I want to get back into the same dungeon for whatever reason. Maintain your incantations. So here we're supposed to help the Templar. Uh, once again, we don't actually need to do anything. He'll just free himself. We got a quiver, that's pretty nice. That'll help us take down the Skeleton King. And I'll be looking for more barrels again to get another movement speed bonus, but it's not looking like they spy. Nope. No Necro. No Necro. Uh, I'm most comfortable on Demon Hunter. And it's also the fastest new game class, so it's a it's a good combo. <laughs> yeah, the will of the Templar is stronger than the staircase. I also skip that voice line so he uh, breaks it faster, and I skip this voice line so he dies faster. Uh, speaking of skipping dialogue, there's two different ways to skip dialogue in Diablo three. There's these little uh, black um, circles above their heads that can only be skipped using a key called uh, close all windows which most people don't know about uh, and then there's these regular dialogue boxes that pop up at the bottom of my screen and those can be skipped using escape which is faster because it will skip all of the dialogues at once where at, um, whereas these uh, black little speech bubbles that pop up will only get skipped one at a time. So, uh, I tend to use escape when I can, but I'm careful about it because there's also a way to uh, uh, basically have it force you out of the game. Kind of like what happened earlier, but it didn't give an error. I wasn't for the same reason either. Basically, if I hit escape as soon as I start a conversation, it'll attempt to pause my game and skip the conversation at the same time, which apparently breaks the game. So here on Cathedral Level 4 is a pretty big, um, randomly laid out map. It spawns in a 3x3 square of tiles, and there's three dead-end tiles and possibly one connecting tile in the center here, and one exit. Checking all these possible spots. And that was pretty decent. The way it put us in, there wasn't much I could do to randomly get that faster. You didn't know you could use escape to skip dialogue. Only only these dialogue boxes down there. There's, there's a lot of big skips that can only be used using close all windows. These skeletons always body block there. They almost always spawn right in front of that door. And here's the Crypt of the Skeleton King. So the Skeleton King, uh, on your first playthrough on a new character, uh, first playthrough of the campaign that is, will always drop a Leorix crown for you, and all um, all bosses at the end of each act will also 
are also guaranteed to drop uh, a random legendary. And Skeleton King will always drop specifically a Lyroic's crown. So he has a pretty long animation for standing up, so I'll break some jars as he's standing up here. It's a little bit hard to actually get the breakable bonus sometimes in here solo. I actually normally didn't do that during my runs until we started doing it in our co-op co runs. It turned out to be uh, pretty useful. I wasn't able to get it there though. Shows poorly, I should have gone top right. So for our boss fights, we'll be using rapid fire the entire game for sustained damage against bosses. Uh, later on, we'll be getting a different impale rune, and I'll use that on some of the bosses and elites for some burst damage. Alright, so got some boots with move speed, that's very good. And for our gear, I will be prioritizing damage and then cooldown reduction slash um, resource cost reduction. Except for my boots, my boots I will always prioritize movement speed. And boots and amulets are the only things in the game that can roll movement speed and there's only one amulet that can roll movement speed and we won't. And it's not in the loot table for the levels we'll be at during the run. Let me just manage some items here. So this map is a static, uh, is a map with static borders uh, where all the contents inside can uh, switch up. So we're looking for the Khazr Den, and there's four possible spots it can spawn, so I'll just be checking all those spawns. And there's not... Since the uh, contents in the center of the map kind of change right now, I'm mostly just doing it by um, feel. I sort of estimate how long, based on the fog of war, I've been going in a certain direction, and then I'll change directions. And... Assuming I hit the first, uh, or the second part, right? This was the last spawn point. So, also I still only, or I still have my Lyrix Crown in my inventory because legendaries in Diablo 3, you have to stop and channel to identify them before you can put them on. So we have specific, uh, spots routed out to, uh, identify those at, and the spot for the Leoric's crown is right here if these guys die. I'm gonna skip this right about now. Because as soon as you skip that, these will, guys will spawn and getting hit will interrupt my uh, identification. And I'll be trying a teleport trick here. Didn't get it. If I click on the sword and hit teleport at the exact same time, I can teleport while picking up the sword. But that one seems to be really hard to hit compared to the one other uh, frame, basically frame perfect trick that there is in Diablo. It's only happened a few times in my life, and only when I was in grave danger. Something rises up from deep within me, and well, I can't really explain it. Okay, so now we're heading towards the uh, scoundrel. Need to save his his lover, quote unquote. I'm gonna... And this is probably the first like long skip where. Uh, skipping the dialogue helps a lot. The scoundrel just talks on and on about how he needs help. It really cuts down at this segment and in a lot of other places later on as well. We got another Leoric's Arc's Crown. And I know it's a Leoric's Crown because that's the only legendary helm that will drop at this level. So. 
promised to your betrothed. Betrothed? <laughs> Do I look like the marrying kind to you? But the tomes say of Alaric and so I kind of wanted to hire him because I accidentally dismissed the Templar. But I wanted him to stop talking as well. So it ended up closing that window as well. It's a uh, bit tricky. So looking for these next two maps. Uh, this map, I don't know if the borders are static. We don't usually go along the borders, but this uh, map on the right will spawn along this line essentially. I can keep going straight here until I see it pop up. Should pop up eventually. And depending on how far I need to go in on this map, it'll help me somewhat figure out where the uh, second dungeon is going to be on this map. This will be also, hey, we're level 9 already, so I can vault now. And we got a fleeting shrine, which is a movement speed bonus. So you want to find as many of those shrines as possible. <laughs> And you do that by making many offerings to Aaron Jesus. And these skeletons always like to body block. Hopefully, it looks like there's no bats that spawn, so I should be able to get out of here easily. We're gonna take the waypoint back to where we were talking with the scoundrel. It is just much faster. So here I'm gonna try and skip this animation by vaulting. And we did get it. Awesome. So I don't need to do it on the second one because if I mess it up I'll waste time and I have to wait for those stairs to pop up anyways. Trying, so that will give us attack speed, of course, which is nice for fighting, but no other use besides that. So again, here I can try the teleport trick on this sword piece as well. I've only done it twice ever, so let's see. Nope. You could actually hear my character uh, say the voice line that I was teleporting out, but... Uh, it'll only work if you can see that blue bar above my head. I must go to Wortham. They're destroying the town. Death to those who defy the power of the coven. We're too late. We can't be certain. Please. My family's hiding in the chapel with the rest of the townsfolk. We so right get... here, these uh, enemies have a very high chance of dropping health globes. You can see health globes spewing out everywhere. I don't know why these enemies specifically, only at this part of the quest, drop a bunch of health globes. But that also means that they will drop a lot of these yellow orbs, which are Nephilim glory orbs. And they can give up to three stacks. Uh, the first stack gives a little bit of extra damage, uh, second stack gives move speed, and the third stack gives, again, more damage. So we mostly want at least two stacks for the move speed, but we didn't get that. And normally I'm level 10 here. And I would take tactical advantage in the basement. I have to wait. There's a ton of breakables in here. Also, something to note about the uh, Nephilim Glory stacks is that it will be, um, I can refresh some of the time by picking up health globes, and it'll refresh the stack completely if I find another uh, Nephilim Glory orb. That 
sound is the low voice sound in my keyboard. Um, my spacebar specifically, which is what we have force move bound to. Uh, I'll, I'll explain that after I explain this map. So this map isn't as bad as most people think it is in casual playthroughs. Uh, it spawns in three segments. The first segment the, will lead to the second segment either on the top or the bottom. So it's a 50-50 shot of guessing it right. And then there's four uh, spots that can spawn in the second segment as it spawns in a 2x2 two two square. So I'll be checking the bottom right edge of this square. And we got it on the first one we checked. I am too low Very nice. So the other places it could have spawned are here, here, and here. So that eliminates uh, three other spots that I would not need to check. And then the last segment is always up and right. And that will lead us to Queen Arane, who has up to three phases, or three cycles. She doesn't really gain different abilities in between them. And she'll run away at certain uh, health breakpoints. So I'm just going to try and deal as much damage before she runs away. So that might be enough to uh, to cycle her. Oh, so close. If we'd gotten one more good impale in, it would have been enough. Okay, we're finally level 10. Probably I do now. Need to wait for her to walk there. So, I don't actually have to talk to her there. I prefer to talk to her, though. Um, you can go and do the next part of the quest without starting that and save that little bit of time of waiting. But if you don't, you won't get this massive circle popping up. And it pops up very early. And there's three spots that the Khazra staff can spawn at. And they are pretty far apart. So unless you get lucky, uh, you may end up checking all three spots if you don't talk to her. So here I'm going to be um, trying to make sure I'm keeping enough discipline to get past these parts. Choke points are full of goats. And besides searching for that staff, the rest of the map has static borders, so I'm just heading to uh, straight to the next part as fast as I can. Checking the inventory while moving is kind of awesome. Yeah, if I have nothing else to be like focused on at that current moment, I always just instinctively open that to check if there's anything else that I need to uh... holy cow there's so many goats here if there's anything else I need to put on or drop because later on especially near uh, act 4 act 5 uh, I'll be getting a lot of items all at once and my inventory will start to get very full and if you don't manage your inventory uh, you will fill up your entire inventory in a single run but as long as you manage it through acts uh, up through act most of act four as long as it's somewhat clean at the end of act four you'll be fine in act five but if you if you never dropped any items you would your inventory would be very full and it would be very frustrating trying to do that on the fly Okay, so Halls of Agony level 1, um, after I get off this initial tile, it'll spawn in a 2x2 two two square, doesn't tell me very much, and I'll be looking for 
a tile with giant butcher cleavers on it that slam into the ground and that will always lead us uh, to Halls of Agony. And we actually found it um, as close as we possibly could to the start of the map. So, even though I hate this tile that I'm on right now as it goes all the way around the allotted square, uh, still pretty happy with the way that spawned. Okay, so Halls of Agony level 2. Very simple map, slightly random, but the exit is always in the bottom right. It can switch between one of two spots, so I'll either follow straight down along this tile, or I'll have to go up or down by one tile, depending on how the map is oriented. So I'm guessing I need to go up a tile. Yep. I need more discipline. Don't spend the points. Don't spend the Paragon points. It's cheating. Yeah. New game rules, you're not allowed to use Paragon points, so... I, I bring it up, I think, only... T or flash the Paragon tab only twice in the run, normally. Um, when I first enter the game, and uh, when I enter the game a second time after doing the level up trick, just so I get that giant blue button out of the way. So here in the Cursed Hold, we need to free some prisoners. And the borders are static, but the cells in here spawn in a few different uh, formations. And I don't like this formation because all these cells weave through each other, which makes getting uh, to the prisoners a lot longer. There is certain spawns where they there's a giant cross section through the middle of all the cells that makes it uh, makes all the cells easily accessible. So we might... Um, the bottom and top half of this map uh, spawn sep uh, different layouts, or they're both random. They could both spawn this kind of a layout. So we'll see what we get on the top half. Another uh, thing to note is if I were uh, really lucky, you can get all the prisoners to spawn on the same half of the map, which is a pretty big save, time save, because you just don't have to go on half of this map. So I'm going to explore this side pretty thoroughly since I know there's going to be four of them on this side. And there's always two cells against this back wall that can have prisoners in it. So, it can be a bit annoying going all the way to this side of the wall to check that. As opposed to the other half of the map, uh, they'll never have those kinds of cells. It'll always just be a wall right there. Hmm, that's unfortunate. And yeah. We, we got the same kind of uh, cell layout on both sides, and that's why I hate this layout. I don't know if this showed up on my screen and I just missed it, or if I didn't check far enough, but either way, I screwed that up. So, I have to wait for the warden to spawn here. I'm just slightly positioning myself closer to the exit. Worst layout ever, yeah. So we are slightly behind on that. So I know I said I wasn't going to stop to kill things to level up, but since I was a sliver away from a skill that I need to take like right now, I stopped. But I'll only stop if it's like less than half a bar. Because even just getting half a bar can require killing like 30 or 50 enemies on this difficulty. Which takes a good chunk of time. 
And right there we got a pool of reflection which gives 25% increased XP for 75% of your current level. At least that's what I thought. Uh, maybe it's only 50%. So that bonus experience will last up until right there on my XP bar. And I'm also skipping treasure goblins, not just because of the time it takes to kill them, but they also just don't drop anything useful. They're only guaranteed to drop crafting mats, they're not guaranteed to drop items that I can actually equip. So they'll drop gold and maybe some... Uh, crafting parts. And those aren't useful for this run. So we finally meet the Butcher here, the last boss in Act 1. So we'll be getting a Legendary from him. And I'm positioning myself purposefully against this back wall. Um, because he does have a charge ability, if I did end up missing the stun, it would set, he will run straight into uh, whichever wall he's facing. So if he were to die at the other end of the map, I would just obviously have to walk further because I need to go this way. So we got an amulet, that's not too bad of a pickup. I normally want to find a weapon or a chest piece from him. And I would want to find a chess piece because the one chess piece that will drop in the Demon Hunter loot table at this level is a Heart of Iron, which gives a huge amount of thorns damage. And our spot for IDing this legendary is right here because we can't skip that animation. And that is Act 1. We are at Chaldeum. doing some item management. I do it pretty quickly because like I said, I'm prioritizing damage um, on pretty much everything except boots because the small amounts of CDR will usually not outweigh the time I save by killing things fast. And never fear chat, I didn't miss an objective. Um, the Enchantress, like many other parts in Diablo 3, will just magically appear to you if you reach the next uh, checkpoint. So after I kill these, I'm going to skip that conversation, but I'm going to let her talk here because she will usually get stuck if you skip that. And sometimes she'll still get stuck even if you don't skip it and just stand there like she was for a moment. And she can stand there for like 20 or 30 seconds. It's pretty pretty annoying when it does happen. There is another illusion here. So that shrine, I don't think we've gotten one yet, and we got it at basically the perfect time since we're uh, beyond level 9. We picked up an empowered shrine, and that gives us Increased uh, resource regeneration and cooldown reduction. So I can vault a lot more. And on this map, I'm looking for two layers. There's going to be a layer on the bottom right, which I'm currently in, that had three spots that it spawned at. And if you're looking super closely, um, there were some closed up doors that I went past because... Uh, those doors will always spawn on the map and they'll just close them up if they're not actually being used, which I think is a pretty cool part, because normally if a dungeon doesn't spawn it just doesn't appear at all, but for these maps specifically they get boarded up if they're not in use. And to break those rituals I just need to kill one. Head out. A 
love that basic meme. I think it is time for More hidden footprints. You hate her. The Enchantress is the best. More hidden footprints is one of my favorite voice lines. I think my absolute favorite voice line though is um, it's coming up soon. Hopefully my demon hunter will say it. <laughs> so right here once again we're on a map with giant uh, static borders. And I don't need to search for anything in the middle here so I'm just heading uh, towards this next encampment area. I need to, um... I need to leave. We need to go kill Magda because I, I forgot to say this earlier, but uh, when we were at that giant burning church, Magda set up a trap and uh, killed Deckard Cain. Uh, so rest in peace, Deckard Cain. So now we're gonna get our revenge and kill Magda. And the, the reason we didn't see Deckard Cain die is because uh, Diablo 3 has a very, very nice uh, cutscene auto skip feature. Uh, a little spoiler though some uh, Easter eggs found in Overwatch. So, this is Diablo's latest release, and Overwatch, obviously. Okay, hold on. So that's my favorite voice line. My, uh, the prisoners asked, please help us, you can't leave us here. And my demon hunter said, don't worry, I will free you. And, well, you can see how that went. So, Overwatch Easter Egg in the map Roots uh, 66 or Root something. Um, there is a check on the wall signed Deckard Kane, and somebody read the uh, barcode or whatever that is on the check, and the thing that popped out of it says uh, Deckard he lives or Deckard Kane lives something along those lines so uh maybe maybe he's not dead we'll have to find out also that was a really atrocious Magda fight uh cause I, I was too too into my easter eggs you, you should be able to kill her uh, without getting frozen, like I did. But she is one, one of the more annoying bosses to fight though, just because of how many adds she spawns and then kites behind them, and they can get in your way. And then when she puts down her freezing traps, it becomes even more difficult to uh, kite out of the freezing while still being able to hit Magda without hitting all of her mobs. Okay, so level 13 we get uh, preparation, which restores our discipline. And as I mentioned earlier, I cannot take skills while in combat, so see the accept button was grayed out there for a little bit because I was considered in combat. If you don't see it happen, it didn't happen. Yeah. Yup. Exactly. If I didn't mention it, I don't think anybody would have noticed or cared. But I gotta be honest with myself. So, these guys turn invisible. Nothing I can do about that. I'm 
we'll be heading back into the sewers again, and we'll get to see, um, oh goodness, what's his name? Prince, Prince something. Emperor Hakan, it's not even Prince. So he's a small child that I'm assuming inherited the throne. And he was in the sewers there to unlock that door for us. We didn't ask him to unlock the door, so we're not sure why he came down here. Uh, yeah. And, wow, okay. So normally, stairs in these types of maps mean dead ends, but apparently not that one. And these, this sewer and the previous one I was in going up to Adria are very small, so they're not that bad, but there's going to be two maps later on with uh, similar tiles that are absolutely atrocious. Those tunnel, they're very long sewer tunnels that just go on forever and have uh, up to two very long dead ends in them. So that is my least favorite part in Act 2. That'll be later. And right now we're on Dull Girl Oasis. We're searching for the Forgotten Ruins. And as a pattern that you'll see evolving here is that this map has static borders and we're searching for a dungeon within that that has specific places that it can spawn, so I'll be checking all of those places in the most efficient way possible. So this map basically spawns in two giant chunks. Uh, you can't see it, but I bat- I just passed through a choke point right there, there's another ball on that side. So we're on the upper right hand chunk of this map, which has um, about two-thirds of the spawns in them, and I've checked about two-thirds of the spawns already. There's, I believe, three left here. So, needless to say, we got a bad spawn. Uh, what we like to do, what we like to find on big maps like those is to find the map as early as possible, and then hope that the waypoint is at the other end of the map that we need to go to next. And it saves a lot of that uh, running in vaulting time. So, Zoltan Cool's head, this map spawns in a square, and there'll be one or two offshoots, and one of them will have his head on it. Act 5 is awful. I agree. It's my least favorite act in the game. Um... For some other runners that said that they had different least favorite acts, but um, after after they ran it a bit more, they they agreed that Act Five is the worst. <laughs> I convinced them by saying, "Hey, look at how big this map is. How does this not annoy you?" I actually need to go to town first. I don't want to get attacked. Outside of this dungeon, we need to talk to Adria. Start the next quest. This is this one speech bubble that we cannot skip in any way. We'll always wait for her to talk there. And we will not be taking the waypoint since it's at a very bad spot in the map. Just gonna go back into here and go back outside of this dungeon. Oh. Whoops. A little bit further right than I thought I was. You will not enter the aqueduct. This cannot be opened yet. And so this is just the beginning of our giant quest to rebuild Zoltan Cool. And this is one of the like um, longest quest lines of, uh, in the game basically. I do my splits in between boss kills, and this one is like an 18 minute-ish uh, split at its fastest, or maybe 15 at its fastest. So it's one of the longest uh, periods in between bosses. 
And here's my least favorite map in Act 2 that I was talking about. We're just praying to not hit dead ends here. From what we know so far, there's no way to predict which way to go. Sometimes uh, these maps will be nice though, and they will spawn in such a formation that it kind of loops in on itself and it'll give you the circle uh, early on with uh, while still being pretty far away, which helps. It did not spawn in that kind of a formation for this map though. I don't remember if I mentioned this earlier or not, but also something unique to Diablo 3 as opposed to, um, I believe I saw this in Diablo 1 and I know it's a thing in Diablo 2 and also in Path of Exile, you cannot move while having the map full screened. So that is why I tab it open and out really fast. You, let me rephrase, you can't put movement inputs in while it's open. You'll, your character will continue moving to your last input while it's open, but you can't put in any extra while it's open. So you just have to get used to tabbing it open and closed really fast if you need to see something. And it's typically not a huge deal in these runs, um, just because the minimap in the top right will usually suffice until you hit a dead end and then you kind of want to know what things look like. And some of the bigger maps in Act 5 it can be useful as well. And you know because I have twitchy fingers and I just want to press buttons I'll just click on it randomly if I have nothing else to do. And time is in years. <laughs> So here we're saving Covetous Shen from this barrel. Notoriously an uh, annoying NPC. Um, but also somewhat of a comic relief with some of his voice lines down here. So right here, this... I hope those are the stairs I was mentioning earlier that lead to dead ends. But since this is going straight down, I'm, I'm slightly worried that I'm wrong. No, this should be fine. So this is a small map. There's only uh, one fork in the road that has a small dead end. And that's the one we turned around from. So I, I'm pretty sure I completely skipped one of his uh, dialogues. As you're leaving, he will ask if you can, uh, if you think we'll find any food down here. Yeah. That's, that's the kind of, that's, that's how he was written. Shen is great, but the Will of the Templar is stronger. Yes. So, um, we found one of the two maps we were looking for at the first spawn, once again. We were in a large static map and we're searching for two maps within it. Or, not static maps, a map with static borders. And the dungeons inside spawn at. can spawn at certain locations. And this one happened to be at one of the first possible locations. Uh, something else to note about those uh, spots that I've been checking for these. Uh, maps to spawn is that uh, those spawn points are also shared with the waypoint. That's why um, if I find the maps early on, it's very good because that means based upon that, um, it has to be one of the other spots that are further away on the map. And it can also help make sure you're following the path correctly. And you never want to accidentally go into that map. It looks exactly like the other map that we're looking for on the inside, except uh, it doesn't have the quest object. <laughs> I 
and they both look exactly the same with that yellow shining light coming. So if you're going fast, you'll be like, ooh, a cave, and just go straight in, and then you'll be sad if it's the vile cavern. Ben's Act 5's toy line is nice. I may or may... I don't remember if I've done it. I definitely don't remember it. <laughs> if I have. So, the level 1 of Cave of the Betrayer is a little bit random, but not too many dead ends, but it can spawn with a giant loop in the middle sometimes. It looks like we are fortunate and didn't get a giant loop. I suppose there could be one there, but I don't. Also, um, something to about these maps is when I'm looking for breakables, um, I'm looking for these egg sacks and the rock piles. I don't think that was enough. And I point that out because there are some other things in here, uh, such as that dead worm and piles of maggots. Uh, they look like breakables, but they don't count as breakables. And that had me confused for the longest time as to why I wasn't getting my movement speed bonuses in here when I broke things. And at two, or well, not at two, level two of Cave of the Betrayer will always end leading top and left, like so. Um, and there's usually a bunch of monsters that stop me from leaving as well. This is nothing out of the ordinary. I usually have to stop and kill stuff here. Um, but this map does like to fake, fake you out a lot, as you can see that was heading up into the exact direction that I needed to search in as well. Are at the tip of the desolate sands. And we unlocked Evasive Fire, which is a hatred generating attack. Um, that will do a backflip if there is an enemy close enough to me, and that will also proc my tactical advantage passive, giving me movement speed afterwards. Research. It's a... Uh, I don't know why he needs such a nice looking place to do research, but it's, it's pretty big for research purposes. These next two maps we'll be exploring are very straightforward, quite literally. Um, they mostly go in a straight line. And I don't know if my vault kind of just lagged there, or if that minion, or if that uh, elite pack had vortex. But if it did have vortex, that was very nice of it to pull me out. As you can see, straight line, and it will have a turn or two in it, usually. And there are some spawns, specific, usually with the uh, top left map, which I'll be going through next, that can have just a bunch of these uh, 90 degree tiles all connected to each other. I, I don't know why I explored the exit like that. <laughs> nice looking. I mean, it seems it seems a bit excessive for experiments, as he said, as he calls them. Okay, trying to break the bonus here. 
one of the things I have to be careful for when doing uh, breakable bonuses is actually making sure that the monsters don't break the objects as I'm trying to break them. Because if they if they break them, they'll they'll effectively steal the buff from me because it it will not count as me breaking it, so I will not get the movement speed if a monster shoots a projectile at the direction of the object. And we're almost done putting Zoltan Cool back together. Just have to find his body now. We found his head, some blood, something else that must be important, I'm not sure what. And now we'll find his body. And you can kind of might be able to hear Zoltan Cool complaining about how they did all of this to uh, try and keep anybody from uh, doing exactly what we're trying to do. I will agree with them. They went to very extensive efforts because, my goodness, do we have to go all over the place. So for Realm of the Shadow, it is a relatively small map compared to some of the other ones with only one dead end and we found the piece that we were looking for, which is this giant ball or knot. And he'll always, his body will always be on this shape of a tile. Sent more move speed on our boots now. Oh yeah, and we went to all that effort to uh, revive Zoltan Cool just to kill him. Yeah. But I guess we had to revive him to get the Soul Stone for whatever reason. Don't know why we couldn't get it without him. It had to be Zoltan Cool to get it. I'm not a lore expert, as you may be able to tell. So right now, we're saving all these people. Um, Belial is attacking the city, trying to, you know, cause chaos, kill everybody, demon things. And we need to either save or kill all of the people. Um, it says to save the people and to not let them get hit by the fireballs, but it actually didn't matter if any of them got hit, as the quest will go forward once they are all dead or saved. However, it is fastest to bring them to the sewer after you've gone to collect them all, rather than trying to get them killed because they won't always die in one hit from those meteors. And it would probably just take a long time to actually line it up perfectly that it hit all of them as well. It's just faster to attempt to save them as best you can. Got a ring. It's very nice. It is uh, not uncommon to finish new game runs without getting rings or amulets, so if you do happen to get rings and amulets, it is uh, pretty nice. I guess since I was out of hatred there, I maybe should have touched on the uh, resource system for Demon Hunter earlier, for those unfamiliar with it. Uh, Demon Hunters have two uh, resource pools. They have Hatred and Discipline. 
Hatred is the red, uh, this red bar right here on the left, and that fuels offensive attacks, so most of your damage dealers will use that. And the blue pool on the right is discipline, and that's used for defensive or tactical skills such as vault. So Belial is the last, bo last boss in this act, so we get another legendary there from him. We got a demon machine, which is a two-handed crossbow, which is nice for us. We want to keep our weapon uh, on par with our level. So there, uh, normally uh, you'll walk down some stairs and then walk through a little uh, small area in the castle to get to um, the main the main part of town, I guess, or the main part of Bastion's Keep. Uh, but teleporting is faster and it'll save your discipline so you can use it as soon as you uh, get into the So here, these beacons always spawn in the same exact places, and the entire map is static except for the monsters and the breakables and all the little objects that spawn inside, but all of the walls are set in place. And like I said earlier, uh, legendary items, we have to channel to identify them, and we have a spot um, coming up just after lighting these beacons where we can identify that at. But, still look through some of these items while we're doing this. Desperately trying to get my movement speed bonus. We got it that time. I failed earlier. Apparently I'm having troubles counting to seven today. Wow. I think I just vaulted twice there without it actually vaulting, but it still gives the movement speed. Which is a very, very rare bug, but sometimes you'll just have vaults that don't move you. So right here is a timed event. We can't proceed forward. We need a uh, drawbridge to be drawn up, and that's just on a timer. We can't make that go faster. So we use this time to just clean out our inventory. Also, a shrine spawning here. It can obviously happen, as it just did, but it is... Very, very rare. Um, my co-op uh, partner for this run has never seen it spawn, and he's done he's done quite a few runs, and I've done hundreds of runs, and that is the third time I've ever seen a shrine spawn there, and it was a good shrine too, so that's really nice. Yeah, empowered, so we can vault a lot more. I'm actually going to just completely spam down my pool here because the next part of the quest, we need to start some events to raise these catapults. And I'm actually going to need to make sure I set it up correctly because I you can softlock this quest. But it is very easy to set it up so that it doesn't softlock. So basically, I wanted to spam through my discipline there because uh, when done correctly, the first one always finishes last, so you get a little bit of leeway on starting the second one and pulling up the third one, which has to be pulled up manually. So the way I set up those first two 
is they'll get pulled up by NPCs. However, the game will send monsters to attack them. However, if you leave the area immediately, um, only two or I think two monsters will spawn on the first one, and the NPCs can live through it. And on the second one, giant siege worms will spawn on the walls and puke out demons, but if you leave the area immediately, none of them will spawn. And I also had to set it up um, so that I didn't accidentally drag mobs up to those areas, because other mobs can end up killing them as well, and elites with extra fixes on them are also especially deadly. And basically what will happen is they will all die and it will never get raised and you have to re reset the quest. Which has to be reset before that drawn bridge or before that drawbridge gets raised. So it is a significant time loss. So now that last one will finish raising even though we aren't out there, we just have to wait for the timer. Okay, so keep depths level one. Um, you typically want to go up and to the right on this map, depending, it all depends on the orientation that you spawn in from. And also going, following that rule does not have a 100% um, win rate or, uh, you know, 100% of it being the correct way put into actual terms that relate to this speedrun. <clears throat> and this is the tau we're looking for in the exit, so I would say about 80 or 90% of the time holding up and to the right will get you straight to that tile that you're looking for. If you hit a dead end heading right and start heading up as much as you can, and then as a last resort, uh, go go wherever, wherever you need. But it will always spawn on that lava tile that we walked through, and with the exit door facing the top left. And keep depths level 2 is our snow map, so the last last one was our lava-themed th uh, map, and this one is our snow-themed map. And here we want to go in general towards the left. It will depend on where you spawn in from, whether or not you're going up or down. Um, as you can see, we spawned in at the bottom of the map, and there's only the only way to go is up, so we're going to be going up and left. And here's the exit. And we'll get to fight Gom. He is he's a nice big boy. He likes to eat food. So something about keep depths level three. Um all three of these paths could possibly lead to the exit. Um top right, uh, bottom right, or top left are the only spaces it can spawn. See. Ooh, that's in another empowered shrine. We're gonna grab that for sure. And I mentioned that top right, bottom right, and top left are the only places it can spawn. And we got an unfortunate layout because uh, we spawned in from the bottom left. Had we spawned in from any other direction, it would have eliminated one of these. But we did get lucky in the fact that I was able to see the circle while exploring that dead end. So with our nice new weapon we got at the end of Act 2, we're gonna take Gom down pretty fast. Sometimes it'll take 10 or 20 seconds longer, depending. And 
As far as the uh, difficulty system goes in this game, we are playing on normal, which is the easiest difficulty, but Diablo 3 uh, has a system where the game will still scale with your level, so even while playing on normal, um, leveling up the monsters, their uh, damage and HP go up. So if I were in this zone at level 1, they would have the HP and damage that match a level 1 character, but since we're level 16 right now, that matches a level 16 character. And in this game, um, it's not really possible to be under-leveled, but it is possible to be over-leveled or under-geared. Uh, whichever terminology you, you prefer, they essentially mean the same thing, because you want to be constantly getting uh, weapon upgrades and other upgrades, but mostly weapons, so that you can keep your damage up with the current level that you're at. Otherwise, if you don't get a uh, weapon upgrade for a long time, the boss fights take a long time. want to have Impale back on. I'm going to attempt to take it. It's going to be really hard to take it in this zone. It's going to tag me as in combat almost everywhere. I can use skills and move with that open until I try to open the map. So normally what I would be doing with these uh, ballistas I have to destroy is I would just be throwing out an impale and moving on because especially since I'm holding a two-handed crossbow it should be enough damage where it either one-shots it or the uh, fire damage dot applied afterward would uh, end up killing it but I still want to take impale for just um, burst damage for elites and boss fights, so I'm still going to attempt to take it. There we go. But I specifically really like having it for that quest. It's very nice. So here, on Rackus Crossing, it is one giant bridge, biggest bridge in the world. It's so big you can barely even tell it's a bridge. Kinda looks like an indoor map unless we're on the upper part. Oh look, giant, giant cavern or dip. Words, don't, don't fall down. That's why there's a bridge here. So we're heading towards the Siege Breaker, or Siege Beast. I count him as a boss as far as splits go, but he's more of a mini boss. Um, he doesn't really have that much lore to him. The only reason I count him as a boss is because he get he gets the special treatment of the big HP bar, but he's pretty weak, and as far as the story goes, isn't very relevant. It's just a giant demon meant to tear down castles, essentially, and wreck people, wreck soldiers in the battlefield. So this is tricky. Um, you know what? I'm gonna check this because if it is a dead end, it'll be. Sh it should be short. This can be a path. This map spawned in a very strange way. Okay, it's a dead end. So this path, this map will always, eventually end up going towards the top right, but it can either. Um, it can go partially to the top left, 
for a little ways or down right, which is very confusing. I want to say about 60% of the time it's just a straight line to the top right. I'll be checking this little corner. Uh, right there is a spawn for shrines and pools. And now we are just going to be doing some circles for a couple of maps. Not really a way to explore these incorrectly. I have to wind down towards the center, searching it for Sedea, since there's not much mechanically going on here. Um, a nice bit of lore, these giant demons you see in the background that are all chained up. Um, the reason they're chained up there is because they actually use their skin to pave the roads in hell. So yeah, that's their purpose in life. That's their job. Um, I don't know why they were assigned to such a horrible life. So yeah, all this like... I want to call it creep because of uh, Starcraft. It looks a lot similar to creep, but I guess all this demonic looking stuff is their skin. Or so I assume. So the first fight with Sedea only bring her down to half health and then we have to go fight her again where she'll be at full health. And you know, I thought I took Impale earlier, I guess I didn't hit accept on it. I tried to Impale some of those guys there, ended up using Fan of Knives. Okay, we have it for sure now. Not much career progression, no. It's, it's pretty hard for them to work up from there, I would imagine. Check that spot again, in case any shrine spawned, didn't get any. There's also another spot for a spine shrine right shrine spawn right there. There's one right there. It's a healing well this time. Shrines, healing wells, and uh Nephilim experience pools, I forget their name. All share the same spawns. Crabby tower maps are crabby. I mean, yeah, there there's not much to them. They're pretty boring. Um, I do personally like them a lot more than some of the acts that we will see later on in Act Five. I would much rather do these, although. It would be a much, much, much more consistent and hard to optimize speedrun, I suppose, um, if most of the maps were like this one. Speedruns for Diablo 3 is basically memorizing as much as many of the maps that are possible to memorize, and the ordering of the quests, and then doing as many runs as possible, hoping for the best RNG. And the biggest part of the RNG part that will help uh, decrease the most time is map spawns, and trying to get them to be short maps and have the objectives be easy to find. Another huge, probably the second biggest part would be um, the shrine spawns, getting lots of fleeting and empowered shrines. And then, lastly, but 
still somewhat important are is the item RNG. But getting decent upgrades is usually fairly consistent. But I have had a couple of runs, not many, but just recently I had a run where I didn't get boots until the second half of Act 5. I mean, I found boots in like Act 3, but they didn't have move speed on them. I didn't get boots with move speed until the second ha half of Act 5. And right now I'm wearing boots with 9% move speed, so you can imagine over 4 acts that's quite a bit of time lost to move speed. And the map we just went through was completely static, it's always the same shape. And now we'll kill Asmodan, the last boss for this act. So we'll get another legendary. And he... The only phrase he knows how to say is, is Arrogant Nephilim. Uh, it's kind of a meme from a while back, and it still holds true. I believe at one point in some of the patch notes they, they said they changed it, so he says it less, but he still says it a lot. Adria, wait, please don't summon the Lord of Hell. Well, that didn't convince her. So yeah, that cutscene we skipped, uh, Adria turned Leah into Diablo. And now Adria is our main character's uh, mortal nemesis, basically. Our hero has a very, very strong hatred for Adria now, and pretty rightfully so, I'd say. So there we got Poxfalds. Um, if there is a certain amount of enemies around me, it will put out a poisonous cloud of AoE damage. You can sort of imagine the uh, theme they were going with there. Those pants. And as you can see, uh, my inventory is starting to fill up quite a bit now after these boss fights. Uh, most of these were from... Um, what's his face? Asmodan. But Act 4 is basically a boss rush. It's a, it's a ton of bosses. There are a couple of maps I need to explore in between them, but there's a bunch of bosses in a very short amount of time. Act 4 is the shortest act in Diablo 3. Got another fleeting shrine. And at the beginning of the map, I clicked on a uh, fountain. It will heal you and give you a random shrine. So I always go and click on it in hopes of a fleeting or empowered. And I believe we did get an empowered from that. And now we have to open these corrupted growths and search for a hell rift. And it can spawn in any of these corrupted growths that are not directly blocking a path like this one. And this one will not have the hell rift in it. And the next one I'm about to break. But they all always spawn in the same place. So that is sort of like a better visual indicator of like those maps where I've had to search for a certain map within a map. Basically, um, all of those corrupted growths I had to uh, kill are possible spawn points, sort of like the other maps, but the other maps the spawn points aren't marked. You have to memorize them. And at one point, I thought that the Hell Rift couldn't spawn out of that growth. Specifically, one run, I was skipping it. And while I was skipping it, I was trying to tell another runner that it couldn't spawn there. And it just so happened to spawn in that exact one at that time. So, you learn something all the time. Now 
we need to go meet up with Tyriel again. We had a short falling out with him uh, when we got to heaven. Don't quite remember why. Probably has something to do with Diablo being alive again. It sort of sets everybody on edge. And Tyriel is notorious for just not talking to us at that spot sometimes. But we didn't have to wait too long. Sometimes he'll stand there for a long time without giving us the next quest. We need that quest for the portal to open. shrines anymore we've hit all the important skills that we want so it's actually um, detrimental to us at this point to level up because we'll start out leveling the gear that we're wearing and we don't I'd rather the gear that I'm currently wearing stay effective and as long as I don't level up the monsters won't get any more difficult than they currently are. So if I do level up, that means I need to try and find new gear, and I'd rather not hope for new gear and just keep my current gear more effective. Although, since we don't stop to kill things anyways, there's not much I can do to stop myself from getting levels besides not taking experience bonuses. Sounded like it swapped my weapon. I don't think it did. So coming up with Izuwal here, he's gonna have a freezing attack. I'm gonna try to dodge. Okay. Oh, we did dodge it. So you can dodge it with evasive fire. We didn't just dodge one of those many freezes there. Um, so one of his freezes is just a giant AoE around him. It has a uh, really, really, really short animation just beforehand that isn't very reliable to just do it or to try and dodge it based off that. I typically try and dodge it when he's at a certain uh, health point, which is when he starts to cast it when he gets down to a certain amount of health. Um, it can be dodged with either Vault or Evasive Fire. Both of those flipping animations are make you invulnerable. And now we are heading to Diablo. Diablo himself. And this is a speedrun of Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls which includes the expansion of Act 5, so we will continue on after this up to Malthiel in Act 5. Sexy Diablo. <laughs> yep, female version of Diablo. Because I guess he was uh, spawned out of Leah's body, so. Yeah. I, d I don't really. I don't know. I don't know the uh, science or lore behind that. So he has three phases, where on the second phase, the. Realm of Terror. Um, he'll run away at certain health breakpoints. And it is possible to kill Shadow Realm in one cycle if you have enough damage, which can be done in a New Game Plus run. 
And I think the best I've gotten in new game is two cycles. If you have a lot of damage and just kind of get lucky, sometimes he'll bug out and stand there longer than he really should. You should be dead soon. There we go. So Diablo is one of the weirder bosses where he actually technically uh, dies before his health bar is all the way gone. After that animation starts, he'll no longer fight back. Oh, that being the last boss of this act. Now they're legendary. We got a bow, very nice. Now on to act five. The worst act in the game, in my opinion. So, with Reaper of Souls, um, they they did two two things that are that can be very clearly seen. They wanted to go back to the that gothic grim roots. So you'll see this um, grayish overtone throughout all of Act Five, and they wanted it to. Uh, yeah, go back to that original sense of Diablo because that's something a lot of people complained about uh, on vanilla release. And also some people complained that it wasn't gory enough. I would say it was already gory, but it definitely would, had a lot of vibrant colors. But if you look closely all throughout like Act 2, and I'm sure many other places, there's like people put onto pikes and just general awful dismemberment of people. But to also add to that theme, they also made uh, Act 5 a bit more gruesome, I would say, than the rest of the other acts. So right there, as Tyrell was walking in, a, a small thing I did was, uh, he has a conversation as he's walking in, and I skipped that conversation and started the quest as he was walking. Normally he'll walk all the way up to the church, and that's sort of the intended spot for you to start the quest. There's quite a couple spots actually in Act 5 where you can start quests with characters while they're walking, if you... Uh, do it fast enough. 8% move speed, we don't need that. And this is our first prime example of why Act 5 is awful. So I said that uh, they did two things that are very relevant. One of them is the... are very relevant in this expansion. One of them is the art style, and the other one is that they thought bigger must be better. Ev Almost every single map is huge. And you can also see that philosophy in their endgame contents every single patch. The, the numbers go up every patch. Which may be a bad thing, may not be a bad thing. Depends on your opinion. Uh, I don't really care too much about the endgame. So... Alright, we got pretty lucky with uh, this map. It was... well, hold on. We have to cross a giant bridge first. It was decently sized. I would say that there are some spawns that can be a bit bigger. Not too much bigger. But there are there's like one spawn that is super, super tiny for that map. The, the exit is like four tiles from the entrance. It's ridiculous. There is some pretty nutty spawns you can get in Act 5, where these certain huge maps randomly have one spawn that is just godly. So, um, 
if you were looking closely in that last room, fitting with the theme of things being more gruesome and dark. I was not walking on a floor, I was just walking on piles and piles of dead bodies. So they, they definitely wanted to lean heavily into that, into that theme with this expansion. And I'm gonna be trying to get some breakables here. There's usually a lot of breakables, but they're not quite lining up the way I need them to. Yeah. And this map spawns in two segments. I was just exploring the edges of that first segment there, looking for that path. And now we're in the second segment, and the exit will be along the border. And this border is not static, it has a couple different ways it can spawn. But you just have to hug an edge and hope that you pick the right way. And so you can see again here, I want to look more closely this time. As we come up here, the entire floor is dead bodies. This new bow I have is actually a lot of damage with it, which is really nice. So this is another spot where, um, usually in New Game Plus, talking to Miriam there to uh, finish off that quest, you can uh, do that part so fast that she'll still be walking into the map, which I guess means you technically have to go more out of your way to get to her, but you can finish that quest while she's still walking. So Westmarch Heights, another outdoor map. It is not as bad as the first outdoor map we had. This one is typically smaller and a little bit more predictable. The exit will always be facing the same direction, but it can, the map can still curve in on itself, so there's not a specific way you know to go, besides knowing that the tile will be eventually facing a certain way. Oh, the, the entrance to the door is always facing downright. And Urziel's pretty annoying here. He stuns you so he can talk to you and then does all of this. And now we can continue fighting. And all the fire is magically and suddenly gone. It's a bit abrupt. So, I didn't skip that conversation, I just walked to a certain point and it automatically skipped it, but uh, some of the lore and storyline going on here uh, is your main character stating how much she hates Adria for what she did to the Just who we're gonna go kill next. Oh. Fado aim. We've been playing an FPS. I typically um, all those monsters always spawn in the same spot. I typically want to hit them with impale and try and one shot them before they spawn their mini ads. Okay. This is 
one of two of my least favorite maps in the entire game. It is tied with the other map, which is equally as bad. So, for this map, the way it is meant to be played is we have to search for two stones to eliminate passages, but um, you do not have to click on the stones to find the right one. You can randomly, luckily, just guess a passage, which is what I'm doing right now. I, uh, strategy is to just head to or towards the nearest door and hope that your 33% chance get your 33% uh, chance finding the right map. And if there's any stones on the way to that door, you can obvious, obviously click on those. And I did click on one stone before entering this map, so it was a 50-50 and we got it, which is nice. So we saved any time we would have spent searching for a second stone. And let me assure you, the Blood Marshes is huge. You can spend minutes searching for both of those uh, stones to eliminate the passages. And this map itself is also big. And typically spawns in two, in two segments. I, s I say typically because I've only noticed it recently, but usually there is some sort of choke point where it's there's a very skinny part that leads into another basically maze. So that would just be a loop if I went back down, so I'm gonna head up this way. Once again, I have two more choices to pick from. And I'm guessing either it's going to be the choke right here or a dead end. Dead end. And because of our pox faults, we're actually killing a lot of things without actually trying to kill them. Okay, so right there is most likely what I would call the choke. It's not as exaggerated as it is on some of the other layouts. And, uh, yeah, Adria is now a giant demon thingy. Some sort of succubus type thing. So, the last three boss fights, all Act 5 boss fights, usually take the longest. It's when your damage tends to start falling off, but we did find a really good weapon right before the start of Act 5, so. We're still doing pretty well, as far as damage goes. And now there is only one boss left to find, but it will probably take uh, ten, 10 or 7 minutes for us to get to him. Or it, I should say at least 7 minutes. Depending on our luck, could take more. So, I don't think. Yeah, I didn't have a legendary 2 ID. If we did get one from Adria or from Urziel, right there as Imperius is walking up, is a good spot to ID any extra legendaries you have. So, here is another timed event basically. We have to kill these demons that fall down and then. A bunch of them will spawn right now. Imperius will come and save us. Because we really needed saving. And for these first two gates, there's nothing I can really do to save time besides getting to the spot faster. 
Um, the second one though, I'm going to try and set up a small little skip, kind of. Um, I'm going to be breaking these towers because those there's guys up there that will shoot at me and I need to try and teleport to the waypoint that is behind this barricade. So right now this door isn't open. Usually you have to wait for them to open it and then you walk down that way, but as soon as we pick up the siege rune, the waypoint is already available to us. And here's the second worst map in the game, and I'm gonna go back. I don't make a fool out of myself this time. So, fingers crossed that I explore this map right. During my last marathon, I did it wrong, and it cost like a couple minutes. So, what we're we're looking for two more siege runes on this map. There's going to be one that spawns along the edge of the map, and one that spawns towards the middle or randomly in the middle somewhere. So we traverse the edges to start because that's going to be the one that takes longer to find. Because the uh, middle one we just sort of walk towards the center of the map and usually find it pretty quick, quickly. And we got fairly lucky with this one. This one's going to be the one uh, considered on the edge of the map. And we found that nice and fast. If we get unlucky with the second one, or where the uh, exit spawns, then you'll get to see truly how big this map is. And one of the easy things that one of the easy things to mess up on this map, because of its jagged outline, sometimes if you're not following it, like basically rubbing up against the edge of the map, uh, you can walk past like a small little divot that you would assume it just becomes uh, part of the wall and follows the natural wall that you're following, but will actually end up leading into this small little peninsula. And here's the center siege room. So yeah, you, you basically get to see full extent how big this map is from one end to the other. It doesn't fit my full screen as it is centered around me at least. We kill this guy that's guarding the ramp. Detect material. So this is what I like to call the uh, our Diablo 3 or ARPG auto scroller. Didn't think they could uh, put an auto scroller into a Diablo game, but they they managed to do it. Technically not an auto scroller. We're not really going anywhere. We're kind of just going back and forth. But I can't make it go faster, which is sort of the the point. Calling it an auto scroller. The only thing I have to do is break those hooks, and then. Four more hooks and an elite will spawn after this. I have to kill the elite before killing three of the hooks, otherwise three more hooks will spawn again. I'm gonna wait for the elite to spawn and kill him first. Now I'll go for the hooks. So, we're getting close to the end. We have two more maps to that are big that we have to walk through and then we'll be at Melfield. A recent time skate time save that I I learned 
is that we don't need to talk to Tyrael there like many other points in the quest, and, or like many other quests. We don't need to talk to the person with the exclamation mark above them. But for the longest time I always talk to him, just because most NPCs you actually do have to talk to. And I didn't want to risk not talking to him because it's kind of a long walk to go back to him. And for Pandemonium Fortress level 1, wow, that was a really good map. Um, typically, hug the right hand side and it will either go like hard off to the right, in which case the exit will always be along the right somewhere, just following the right edge of the map, or it'll just go straight and there will never be a right hand turn, and it'll go straight to the exit, or it will, um, it'll go straight for a little bit and then kind of lead you into some loopy looking tiles, or to a side quest in which you then want to start heading top left. And as far as this map, traversing it, uh, I don't need to actually um, search for anything anymore, but it also, this map has a 100% consistent strategy. Hugging the left hand side will always lead you to these portals, which you want to look for. Uh, something that can confuse uh, a casual playthrough or a new runner is these portals can spawn in a way where you'll see It'll look like the closest portal to you is in the top right hand side of the map, but that will either be a side quest or this thing just spawned in a funky way where it loops in on itself and people will get baited into going up there just to find out that there's a wall not connecting them to I'm gonna take Drill of the Hunt and Call of the Weak before heading in there for a consistent damage buff boost against Melthiel here, which is the last fight. So what those two passives do is one of them slows an enemy uh, when I hit them with a Hatred Spender, and the other one... So I do not have a cheat death currently, so I was, I was dang near close to having to restart the this fight. I wasn't that far into the fight though, wouldn't have been that bad, but it would have been embarrassing. I've only ever died in a speedrun once and it was to Melthiel. And it was in like, one of my first 10 runs. But yeah, if you don't kill him fast enough, he'll deal quite a bit of damage. Another thing to note is I can kill him before he does that fiery attack he just did, and he has invulnerability during that attack. Um, I can damage him, but I can't deal the fatal blow during that animation. So normally, I want to kill him before he even does that attack initially, so he doesn't um, become immune. Yada yada. Kill him faster. So we have to wait for Tyrael to walk in, and time will be when I start talking with Tyrael. And... Time. So yeah, that was Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls, new game Demon Hunter. Thank you guys for watching. And that is the Diablo block. If you're interested in any of the Diablo games, just go to speedrun.com, search for Diablo. On there you can find a Discord. We have a giant Discord with, the, with runners for all three of the games in that Discord. So if you're interested, uh, hit us up over there and we can help you out. Well, thanks for the run. By the way, your time was 158.24. Awesome. Yeah. Right. So, uh, yeah, that was a great Diablo block. Uh, thanks, everyone, for tuning in for this. So, up next, we have Dragon Slayer Gaiden uh, by Cruiskater. So, we're just going to jump to intermission quickly and just get him set up, and we'll be back in just a few.